What's going on, Jerome? So we, we got a Q&A video. Um, so we put, we, we put out for questions. And uh, sorry, I said we're going to do this on Monday. But what can you do? And also, we got like 104 questions. Uh, I want to give each of them some time and some thought. So we may actually split this into two videos where, I don't know, I know I put out an hour long Q and A video, so we'll just do two half hour ones or something like that. We'll figure it out. Westworld, uh, Ryan Wright is such a weapon. Yes, the Colts had a few nice punt returns, but pinning them down inside the ten paid a huge difference. Yes, uh, I think that Ryan Wright. Uh, I, I was wrong. Uh, I, I was down for holding on to the veteran Jordan Berry, but Ryan Wright has been an absolute monster. Uh, you could make a good case that he's been a top two punter in the league. Of course, he's not going to get that recognition because he punts for the Vikings, but he's just been an assassin. I love me some Ryan Wright. Uh, K. Rim. This defense actually looked uh, fun to watch, and you could root for them due to actually blitzing and moving uh, a bit moving a bit up in on coverage. Do you think Ed is a part of the Jeromes and took your advice? Two touchdowns were scored by their special teams and defense, so took over. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, I – well – it, it would be kind of awesome just to see like Ed Dante is like, mm, tss, just taking the temperature of the fan base rectally. And then all of a sudden he comes across us and the, he, he basically did steal all of our ideas about playing more press man, playing more single high, playing uh, not eight or nine yards off of the line of scrimmage, blitzing, just getting after it. And that's exactly what they did against the Colts. It was really night and day strategy uh, from what the Vikings have done the last couple of weeks. Plus, they're running, uh, you know, NASCAR packages. Plus, uh, they have five man lines, four man lines. <laughs> I mean, they're blitzing corners. It was amazing, man. It was fantastic. Uh, so I, I do like the things like, hey, maybe, 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 maybe he does. Uh, Westworld uh, ten to zero in one score games of Kirky. Man, I'm in love with Kevin O'Connell. They just find ways to get it done in tight spots. Uh, David Nelson. Do you think that the second half strategy of dialing up more pressure used by Ed Dantel's defense will carry over to the first half of the Giants game, or will we just get more of the same passive zone defense? I hope it's more than just an anomaly. Uh, I, I, I do think that you can't really argue with results, and I think that O'Connell and Donatel and Petten are smart enough to be like, hey, this worked, and we're just going to rock it till the wheels fall off. Uh, Kai, Kyleen Strum. Oh, Kyle Enstrom nailed it. Uh, what an unbelievable game. Skull, this team truly is ultimate love-hate relationship. I hated him in the first half, loved him in, in the second half. Actually, we should do a video of our uh, of us reacting to our halftime video because it, it was not really that kind. <laughs> I love the content. Been listening since 17. Uh, you should make more of the Da Vinci uh, Vitruvian Man Skull chant shirts are awesome i never got one uh we, we didn't make them um one of our sponsors made them from back in the day i, I forget the name but i don't know I, i'm sure we could crib a, a design or something janky what kind of halftime speech did you go and give everyone playing for pride i don't, I don't, I don't know why i just went irish there but no i, I think that uh, I think that uh, Patrick Peterson's speech encompassed what everyone's thinking. Just get five touchdowns and a couple of stops. That's all. all that's all I needed. But really, it was playing for pride, showing that you didn't quit, showing um, that you, you still have guts, and and you didn't just roll over and die. And I, I think that making a couple of plays, all of a sudden you get some confidence. Because I mean, when the Vikings were still down 36-21, I mean, you could see some of the Vikings players. I mean, they they were talking, they were jawing, like they were getting after. Where the Colts were just like sphincters like that in all seriousness uh it was cool to see how players and kevin o'connell appreciate the fans who stuck with the team yeah uh, and you know for a fact that there's there, there's fans who left that stadium at halftime <laughs> oh man oh man regrets i had a few and that is one uh bar barb irk uh figuring uh, how well the Vikings have done uh, with a first-year head coach and all-new coaching personnel during what has been competitive rebuild. Uh, how do you see us doing two or maybe three years down the road? Thank you for the uh, for the content, Skull. Uh, I think that the nice thing is Kevin O'Connell is the head coach, and he's offensive-minded guy, so you're going to have continuity on that side of the ball, and it still is an offensive league. And also Donatel, uh, I mean, if they keep him, he's not getting a head coaching job. Right, and you look at the rest of the staff. You have Petten on staff, or if they do move on from Donatel, Petten makes a lot of sense as DC, or a guy like Mike Smith uh, makes a lot of sense as DC, currently the outside linebackers coach. So you, you could and should have some continuity on that side of the ball. Uh, but in terms of like the coaching staff, I feel really good about it. Uh, Harrison Nelson, also Wes Phillips being in the building. 
Like I, I, I don't think Wes will be in line for a head coaching job this cycle. Uh, you know, maybe in a couple of seasons. So having that brain trust uh, offensively together is great. Uh, Harrison Nelson, I legitimately believe Jeff- Jefferson is the best receiver I've ever watched. I'm not old enough to have gotten the chance to watch Randy. Would you consider Jefferson better? I know Moss is more of an elite athlete uh, when it comes to pure skill. Jefferson is on another level. I uh, hope he continues uh, this for years uh, with the Vikes. Well, with Randy, so Moss gets this reputation of being a, a super freak and that absolutely was true but he was an insanely clean route runner as well like he's the type of guy who could get open in a phone booth uh he his footwork uh, paired with his speed and size and hands and leaping ability i mean he was uncoverable he really was and he was more than just a uh you know a deep shot wide receiver like, he was a complete receiver and i think people forget that um but I mean, Chris Carter was fantastic. Jerry Rice was fantastic. Fitz is fantastic. Justin Jefferson is certainly there. Um, but, uh, you know, Randy's biggest enemy was him, where, you know, he forced his way out of Minnesota or Vikings kicked him to the curb. He had a couple of lost years uh, with uh, the Raiders where, I mean, he should have and could have been stacking up those stats and wins. And you saw what happened after he was traded from the Raiders to the Patriots. He still played phenomenal football. Right? And then he forced his way out of New England and ended up here for a month and then ended up in Tennessee. And it's just just weird, man. Uh, next. Um, Drippy is him. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, at halftime of the Vikings game? Uh, did you ever think the game was over? Uh, well, we'll have to go back and take a look at, at the tape. But I, I knew that we were saying that it was an embarrassing half of football. And we're imploring the team to play with pride in the second half. Um, I don't know. Well, I was sort of resigned that it was going to be a loss. And even when the Vikings were showing some hat and coming back, putting a couple of touchdowns on the board, getting some stops, I was like, okay, you know, even if the Vikings still lose this game, um, you know, 20, you know, uh, 36, 28, it was like, well, good showing in the second half, something you can build on, secure the division uh, against the Giants and all that stuff. But then, wow, 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 wow. Uh, deplorable Neanderthal. Do we actually make any substantial changes on defense in this game? What were they? Yes, yes. They, they blitzed the hell out, out of uh, Matt Ryan. Uh, they played single high. They pressed man. They played man coverage. They had four or five man lines. Uh, they had NASCAR packages. They had everything, man. They, they had everything, baby. And they better keep this up going forward. Uh, Wolf, uh, who will the Vikings possibly play in the first play first in the playoffs? And who would you possibly play in the NFC Championship? Skull of the content. Favorite Vikings podcast. Actually, let's bring that up because we we just had that. Um, Enhance. All right, so the season ended today. Uh, the two seed Vikings would be hosting the seven seed Commies. And, and again, I, I don't want to hear trying to groove a playoff matchup with the Giants or uh, if the Lions or even if the Packers get in at the seven seed. Don't want to hear that. But all right, so say the Vikings beat the Commies. Yes. Uh, the Niners beat the Giants. Yes. And the Cowboys beat the Bucks. Yes. So it'd be a one, two, three, five. So the five seed Cowboys would actually go to Philly. So that, that'd be super fun. And then the three seed Niners will be playing at U.S. Bank Stadium against the two seed Vikings. Now, this is, again, why that two versus three seed is extremely important, because uh, if you have the two seed and you win the wild card, you're guaranteed uh, another divisional game. You aren't, you aren't guaranteed that with the three seed. So say, let's flip flop the Vikings two and three. Uh, so you have the one versus the five, the Cowboys uh, versus the Eagles. And then the Vikings actually be on the road against the Niners. And that's a big time difference there. Uh, next. Oh, and the NFC title game uh, would be Vikings versus, well, if the Cowboys beat the Eagles, which is a non-zero chance, the Vikings will be hosting the NFC title game. And if the Eagles win and the Vikings win, the Vikings will be visiting Philly for Redux. Redux. Uh, Let's see here. Drew Wanzik, uh, how do you feel about the nickname, the new nightmare for Cousins? (laughs) I also want to say I appreciate how active you are with our community skull. Hey, thank thank you for the shout out, but n- n- the new nightmare. That, that's funny. Uh, the new nightmare is also like getting a bad taco or a bad oyster at lunch. Uh, Nick Ger- Gervasi. Uh, just curious because you strike me as a very educated person. Uh, did you go to college or university and do you have a side job? Or are you able to make a living off the podcast? Cause uh, if you are, it seems like you're living your dream job. Skull love the podcast. No. Uh, so yeah, I, I do have uh, multiple day jobs still in the working world. Uh, this is a very fun side hustle that brings in a, a couple of jelly beans, which is fantastic. Uh, but really I, I just love creating the content and also just being involved uh, and growing this community, which is awesome. Uh, education wise, um, yeah, I got, you know, got a four year degree from Winona State, got a master's. So 
I mean, I've, I've never used either. <laughs> Not particularly. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Margaret McGraw. Uh, it's time to start looking at playoff scenarios. Uh, who do you think would be the most favorable matchup for the Vikings uh, would be? Uh well, again, I, I, I just said it's sort of bad karma and juju to trying to groove a playoff matchup. Uh, let's see, NFC standings. I nailed it. All right. All right so I, I'm not afraid to play anyone. So the Cowboys are going to be playing the four seed no matter what. I don't think anyone's catching them. Uh, but the Vikings potentially playing, hosting the Giants, the Commies, the Seahawks, the, the Lions, Packers. I feel fine with any of them. Like, I don't care that the Lions are surging. I don't care that the Lions beat the Vikings two weeks ago. Don't care at all. Uh, you, you play who you play. Uh, user, blah, blah, blah. Do you think the defense, uh, did good yesterday, allowing just one touchdown? Also, they made a lot of stops, uh, within the 40 because special teams kept giving the Colts really good field position. I, I think that was the best defensive game that the Vikings defense has played this season. And it it's weird looking at the score, but when you really break it down, um, you know, one was a defensive touchdown. One was a special teams touchdown. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, that, that's not bad at all, uh, especially the field position they were given. Destined for greatness, uh, especially uh, three points allowed in the second half and overtime. When we trade for Mullins, do you think we should have traded for Brock Purdy instead? And my second question, uh, if the Jets were ever released Zach Wilson, should we sign him? Uh, the latter part, so Kwesi does love first round project rehabs i mean well blacklock was a second round pick but jalen rager you look at um you look at uh, josh rosen just signed to the practice squad so he he does love pedigree so it would make sense possibly um for training for mullins um well no oh, well, the vikings traded for mullins from the raiders um, so they weren't even doing business with the niners but i, I don't think the, the niners would have traded a, a rookie quarterback yeah. Uh, I movie King. Uh, did you see that post game interview with Dalvin cook? He was so happy and screaming. I never thought I'd see him so happy. Just fun to see him like that. I, I didn't see that particular one. Uh, I did see the Kendricks one where he, he was, he, he was a little choked up where, you know, talking about winning the division because, um, it's not always easy. Absolutely not. Uh, let's hear Nick Jirasi. Uh, what are your thoughts on CJ Ham's two touchdowns coming against the bills? comeback uh, coming in the bills comeback and the Colts comeback is he the most clutch fullback in the league yes and he should be all pro screw Patrick Ricard screw Cal used check check uh CJ Ham is the man uh meatball musician music man uh what do you think the 2023 season holds new defense coordinator KOC staying in the Twin Cities uh are we going to be more scary next year well wh why would Kevin O'Connell leave I don't know. Uh, I think the Vikings will be more scary next year uh, I think that they'll add some parts on defense I mean I think Donatel is going to retire or be promoted to senior defensive consultant, something like that. And, I mean, personnel-wise, there could be some changes. Because uh, Diesel Dalvin Thompson is a free agent. Uh, they could get rid of Kendricks. They could get rid of Jordan Hicks. Uh, they have a decision to make with Daniil. Uh, Zadarius is under contract technically for two more years, but he'll need a new deal. Harrison Smith, Adam Thielen, uh, Bradbury is a free agent. So, I mean, there could be a lot of changes on this team. And we've seen that Kwesi is not afraid to do that. Um, so, I mean... Could be, this could be a radically different team next year. Uh, Sarge, crazy how you think the Blitz quarterback, uh, they usually make errors. Eh, that's what happens. People get flustered. Uh, Justin Miller, first off, Skull, that game was nuts. Second off, not sure if you were planning on it already, but a video idea for the end of the season. Compare all of ESPN win percentages uh, from every game this season. Or uh, I, So I like the idea. Uh, we, we could also do the, um, the, like the preseason power rankings. Just to see how they're flipped upside down, man. Uh, Noah Koski, what do you think of Austin Schlutman? If Bradbury goes a free agency, is he someone we can rely on and continue to grow? Uh, it's possible. Uh, Schlutman is young as well. I think he's 26, so somewhere in there. I think he's played well, uh, given the circumstances over the last two games, filling in for Bradbury. Uh, Bradbury, I mean, he could get paid pretty big in free agency. You're talking about eight, nine, ten million bucks per year and going rate for, you know, top free agent centers. And, you know, Schlutman, I mean, maybe they could build around him. I mean, Chris Cooper uh, was with him in Denver. Uh, so that continuity helps. Curtis Modkins, run game coordinator, was also with him in Denver. Uh, and it's clear that they uh, they also like him. Um, so we'll see. Uh, showdown. After the game, the song Unstoppable came on the radio. Perfect song for the Vikings. Which unstoppable song though? I don't know. It's pretty good. Uh, or we could do like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Can't stop. Da -na -na -na. Something like that. Uh, Noah Koski. Am I the only one who sees Cook all the time and Jefferson sometimes run out of bounds and not hurry up situation instead of fighting for extra one to five yards? They're potentially there. KJ, no attention. Da -da -da -da. Well, 
I don't know about Dalvin, but I definitely disagree with Jefferson. And we said that Jefferson is extremely good of just falling forward. Like watch it, just watch him during a game. How many times he just falls forward and gets an extra yard or two. Um, he, he's just really good at getting that little extra yardage. So yeah, I disagree with Jefferson. I don't know about Dalvin. Uh, Jack's domain. Do you believe KJ Osborne could have a bigger impact uh, in the offense after the way he was play he played on Saturday? Yes, uh, I think that he had a breakout game. I think that he was the one who was really digging deep at the beginning of the second half and really sparked the Vikings' comeback. And I, I do think that the future for KJ is bright. I, I think that he him and Jefferson should be wide receiver one and wide receiver two. Uh, Jake Lagavin, in terms of pure entertainment, exciting games. What's your favorite 2017 Magic Carpet ride season or 2022 10 and 0 one score game so far this season? I would have to say this this year because 2017 was a lot of fun. Plus, I had an eight game winning streak in, in the middle of it. But you know, besides the Minneapolis miracle, there, there isn't really like any like notable finish games. Like, like there were good games for sure, uh, but th there wasn't a game on the level of the Colts game. There wasn't a game on the level of the Bills game. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll take 2022. Uh, Thomas Mix, uh, what do you think happened for the defense to step up after halftime? Um, they were all promised a pizza party if they won <laughs> or if they held uh, the Colts to three or fewer points. Uh, Derek Baker, uh, what do KOC, Donichelle, et cetera, have to do in order to get 60-plus minutes of urgency, focus, and execution from all three phases of the game rather than 30 minutes we saw on Saturday? In my humble opinion, this team would be close to unstoppable if they played a complete game as well as they did in the second half. I don't know. I mean, if we figure out the psychology of getting 46 uh, grown men on game day to get their minds right and play to their best abilities. I mean, that, that would be a billion dollar idea, maybe even trillions. Uh, Kirk, Kerr, uh, my dad wants to know if we're going back uh, to the shell defense or if we start playing like a real defense, second half of the Colts the rest of the year, a hundred percent that they got to stick with what worked in the second half. And that has to bleed over to the rest of the regular season and the playoffs. Uh, da, da, da. PS I've been watching since Joe cap. So we need a super bowl win before I die. Hey, I'm going to get you one. Uh, Tina M. Dobson. Uh, the first half of the season, we saw teams double, even tripling J.J. The, the last few games, especially yesterday. We saw teams trying to see how much uh, they could abuse and get a, away with uh, against him. How worried are you that you could have a bounty on his head? Uh, how do we give him some protection? I know it's J.J., but he's also human. I, I think Kevin O'Connell did all that he could in terms of calling out hits. and uh, So, when in in sports, you're not arguing for that call. You're arguing for the next call. So I think that uh, O'Connell was really smart putting the seed in, uh, in the minds of officials going forward and even like opposing defenses going forward. So, hey, we know that you guys are being cheap with Justin Jefferson. The officials know it too. They're going to flag it. So you, you got to stop it. You got, you got to knock it off. Our Oscar Piltz, uh, do you think this will be like what happened with the Bills game where we close out the season and secure the two seed? I, I think... I think the Vikings went out. I think the lesson from that Bills to um, Cowboys game, uh, I think that will certainly be taken to heart by this team. Uh, Harms Way, uh, do you think Ed Dontel was coaching as though his job depended on his second half? Yes, I, I think he absolutely did because, I mean, if they laid down and you know gave up 50 total to the Colts, who had been averaging 12 points a game on the road, uh, it was over. It, it was over, man. Uh, Kel... Kellen uh, Drag, it feels like uh, each week I change my mind on Dalvin Cook. Do you think he should stay uh, Viking next year? Yes or no? Not at ten point four million. Uh, if he wants to take a pay cut, we can talk about that. But I mean, just quasi and analytics, it, it doesn't say pay uh, ten plus million for a twenty eight year old running back. It just doesn't. Uh, Cleanard, uh, do you do you think this win against the Colts uh, mean we have proven we can overcome any obstacle, or does anyone know if and when the NFC Champions T-shirts come out and they have the store in the UK? <laughs> uh, I think it showed that this team can dig itself a big hole, but it can also dig itself out of a big hole. But we already knew that, man. Uh, Owen, my little, uh, what changes do the Vikings defense need to make uh, in the off season? I think getting more penetration along the defensive line. Like I, I like Diesel Dalvin. I, I like Harrison Phillips a lot, but I mean, you just need guys who can generate their own pressure on the interior. Uh, I think that's a big one. Uh, getting younger and faster at linebacker, uh, as well as um, at, you can never have enough cornerbacks. Uh, Justin Noah, uh, would you say 
Who would you say is the team to root for besides the Vikings? Maybe you have an AFC team you pull for to win a lot. Uh, thanks, uh, the thanks for the awesome content. Let's go, Vikes. Hey, thank you. Um, I, I've said before I, I I have liked the Raiders, but I don't know if I like the Vegas Raiders. No, like I love Vegas and I love the Raiders, but together it's just like hermetically sealed and just whatever. Um, I always kind of like the Browns since they came back. I, I believe I had a Tim Couch jersey from back in the day. <laughs> Uh, and, and also just goes into like the lovable losers category too, where it's like, you know, you know, um, that's about it. Yeah. Maybe the chargers, maybe the chargers since they're the AFC Vikings, it's possible. Uh, we'll, we'll do one more and then we'll split this into two. Uh, Zach Rogue, uh, tips for beginning YouTubers and how you found success making, uh, videos or how things changed since starting out. Uh, I don't really know much about the, you know, the content creator industry i just know what works for us and um you know just getting started by just getting in reps and just getting comfortable uh talking getting comfortable uh, in front of the camera get comfortable editing and uh and just gauging finding out like what topics work for you what topics don't people like uh what you like doing i mean also has to be a, a big factor in because if you don't like the content that you're making even though uh it's getting some eyeballs i mean you're not going to enjoy it but uh, i think the biggest thing too is just keep getting in reps you know, keep shooting your shot because i mean people don't bl just blow up overnight it just doesn't happen um so i mean a everyone who's got a million subscribers out there i mean they started off with zero right so they just started growing and showing and building and just getting in those reps keep grinding uh, have a vision for where you want to be but also have it be a realistic vision you know you're probably not going to get uh, a million subscribers overnight i mean hell we only have 62,000 which in the grand scheme of things uh it's not very large but i mean we do have goals and visions of getting to 100k um i, I think that's a very attainable goal you know within the next year maybe year and a half and uh, just having fun with it. I, I think that's the key because if you're not having fun, you're going to get burnt out. Uh, so that's it. First half of the Q&A.